Hi there. I'm Marcus Herbert Jones, author of young adult novels like Romeo for Real, Just Julian, and the recently released We Three. Today, I'll be reading to you a chapter from Romeo for Real and a chapter from Just Julian. These novels are a contemporary retelling of Romeo and Juliet, but gay, modern day, and nobody dies. In this version, Julian and Romeo get their own story, with the chapters overlapping but never being quite the same. Set in contemporary Winnipeg, Romeo and Julian tells the same love story but from two very different perspectives, as each young man learns what they're willing to sacrifice to be together. We're going to start with chapter 6 from Romeo for Real, titled Reconnection. The orchard bookstore had rainbows everywhere, mixed with many other flags Rome didn't even recognize. One was purple, green, and yellow. One faded from pink to blue. Several had symbols as strange to him as ancient runes. Rome read the pamphlet again, confirming the address, but there was no doubt this was the place. Maybe I shouldn't have come, he thought, biting his lip. Rome wandered through the shelves. He browsed each section like he was on an archaeological dig. He scanned the titles with guilty fascination. There were so many books. They were squeezed on the shelves in such a way that he worried pulling one would make all the others explode out with it. Many were simply piled on the floor or sitting on their sides on top of other shelves. Once or twice he had to catch himself from bumping into things and tripping over several small stacks. Rome carefully avoided sections with names like lesbian erotics, queer spirituality, and trans lit. He moved towards the more familiar. In classic fiction, where the eyes were dotted with little hearts, he found a copy of Frankenstein. But when he opened it, he found it was a retelling of the original made to be about politically radical transsexuals. He put the book down on top of a rather high stack and moved on to gaze over more titles. Voices floated over from the other side of the shelf, and Rome couldn't help but eavesdrop. Here were some real gays in their natural element. He felt like a wildlife researcher. Listening through the stacks, Rome caught hits of conversation, giggling and teasing. They almost sound like me, Marty, and Ben, he thought. As the group grew quiet, Rome began to worry that they would leave before he could catch a glimpse. Unable to find a peephole, he decided to make his own. Rome picked up a novel and set it on top of a nearby stack. He removed another after that and continued removing books one by one. He tried not to be noticed. The shopkeeper was busy talking to someone and barely glanced in his direction. But Rome kept an eye out, just in case. Finally, when he had cleared his side of the shelf, he ducked down for a look. But he found himself face to face with more books, this time with the spines pointed away from him. Of course, he slapped his own forehead at his short-sighted thinking. Then Rome heard a voice. What was that? He could swear somebody was saying his name. Urgently, he tried to pull one of the books off the other side of the shelf. He pinched at the paper with his fingertips, but he only managed to push the books over. They fell with a handful of soft thumps. Rome ducked before he could even glance through the opening. There was light treads, footsteps approaching the other side. Someone had noticed him. He peered up and saw a familiar face. You! Rome exclaimed at the same time as the familiar stranger. He felt his face turn red. He wondered if he'd been hit on the head and slipped into a very vivid dream. The mystery boy was here, right in front of him. Rome looked down quickly, shoving his sweaty palms into his pockets. What were the chances? What should he even say? What if he doesn't like me? What if he does like me? The boy took a step closer and said, Romeo, that's you, isn't it? Worried thoughts flitted through Rome's mind as he stumbled over a few words. Um, it's, uh... The stranger placed his hand on the edge of the shelf and peered through. I'm Julian. Julian Capulet. Rome glanced up shyly. He noticed a bright splash of yellow across Julian's forefingers. It seemed to grow and take over his whole view. What needed yellow? he asked. Hmm? Julian replied, clearly puzzled. Then he followed Rome's eyes to his hands. Oh, I was doing a little painting. Guess I didn't wash it all off. Rome grinned, picturing Julian with a paintbrush behind his ear. Too cute. I'd love to see your art one day, Rome said. He cautiously put his own hand on the edge of the shelf. He pushed it slowly towards Julian. A tingling sensation ran through his fingertips as they softly brushed against each other. It was like he'd connected a circuit. The air was charged, like just before a rainfall. Rome felt sweat begin to drip down the back of his neck. This was too much. What were the chances of running into a guy twice? This had to be fate. He leaned into the tiny space between the books. There was just enough room to whisper. Would you mind if I tested something? Julian simply nodded. Rome confessed, I sort of haven't really, I haven't really felt the way I felt when, 
He paused, trying to find the words. I guess I just want to be sure. Julian moved forward, pushing a few books off the shelf along the way. He pressed his lips against Rome. The tingling between them became an all-out electrical storm. Rome let himself get swept away. Hey, you two, called the shopkeeper from the front. Not in the books, would ya? Hey, is that you, Julian? Who you got in there? Another voice called out. Footfalls came from the back. Someone was coming to see what was happening. Julian looked away and Rome began breathing rapidly. His heart was pounding in his chest. Was this real? Was this really happening? Rome began to panic. He was in a gay bookstore with a gay boy who had been kissing and wanted to kiss again, and more gay people were coming to talk about things that he could only assume would also be gay. I don't want to just run away again, he thought. But he had to get out of there. Rome shot a nervous look to Julian. Amazingly, the other boy seemed to understand. The two moved quickly to the end of the shelf, and they ran out of the orchard, hand in hand. Next up, we have chapter five from Just Julian. This one's called Second Blush. Julian tapped his feet as he looked over the bus schedule. Why are all the buses in Winnipeg always late, he whined, peering down the street. You seriously didn't think you were getting away that easy. Spinning around, Julian saw Sammy, a smirk on their face. Gina stood a half step behind with a hand on her hip. Julian pouted, I just don't like crowds. He crossed his arms. Lila would have known that. Sammy shrugged. Fair enough. So it was you that asked me to get you out of the house. And since you pretty much only leave your bed, what? Sammy counted off a few fingers. Once every four billion years, they laughed. I'm not letting you off that easy. Julian sighed in defeat. He had thought that this is what he wanted, a friend to get him out of his funk. But the outside world was too loud, too bright, and too dangerous. I think I know a place for us to go, Gina suggested. She scooped up Julian's arms and dragged him along. Julian looked back for just a moment and saw the bus approaching. He muttered a curse in its direction as he was pulled from the stop. As they made their way to the mystery destination, Julian's stomach began to twist up with nerves. Sammy and Gina carried along, keeping up their own conversation. Gina going on about her favorite subject, her recent sex capades. Sammy listened with excitement, asking questions and cracking sarcastic comments, squealing with laughter, making Gina's grin all the wider. Julian let himself slip from their grasp and followed behind, thankful that at least his friends, or kidnappers, could keep themselves occupied. Julian started looking around. He caught one of the drivers passing by, giving them a long stare. A passing group of pedestrians let out a cruel-sounding giggle. Chewing at the ends of his fingernails, Julian again found himself dreaming of the safety of his dark little bedroom, but it was too late to bail now. They had arrived at the Orchard Bookstore. The Orchard was quiet and calm, just like Gina had promised. With a few other people in the store, Julian could wander along the dusty old paperbacks and look at their cover art. Gina had barely taken two steps inside before she started putting the moves on the clerk behind the counter. Did you bring us in here just to flirt? Sammy asked with a sideways smile. Gina winked in response. Julian's eyes fell on a book with a picture of a tall, handsome man, the romantic figure's dark hair swirling as he was silhouetted by a sunset. The character, to Julian, was the spitting image of Romeo. He picked it up and took in the details. He only glanced up when he realized Sammy was standing next to him, giving a knowing look. I know, I know, Julian whined. He put the book back in, in, in hurried. I know, I know, Julian whined. He put the book back on the shelf in hurried embarrassment. It's silly, but I just keep thinking about him. He sighed. Maybe I should just go home and do a painting. I, I need to get out this energy. I can think of better ways to get out my energy, Gina responded loudly from the front of the store. Sammy shrugged and patted Julian on the shoulder. They left him to his fantasies, moving to the back of the store with books on body modification. Julian picked up a romance novel once again and looked at the cover. He sighed, put it back down, and moved deeper into the stacks. Running his hand along the multicolored spines of worn secondhand books, Julian's mind returned to the night before. He relived the electricity of the kiss, the heartbreak of Romeo leaving without a goodbye. He was gripped with the fear that it had been, at best, a one-time chance encounter, and at worst, some kind of cruel joke. Romeo. Julian said the name quietly, to himself. He liked the way it moved through his mouth, how it rolled off his tongue, how it fell through his lips. Romeo, he said again. 
Who the hell is named Romeo these days anyway? And what am I doing with a guy like that? With a sigh, he said the name again. Romeo, why did you run off like that? Was Ty right to chase you away? Were those guys really your friends? And what about me? Was I the victim of a prank or drunken experiment? Julian leaned back into the stacks of books. Romeo, who are you? Will I ever see you again? Out of the corner of his eye, Julian saw a row of books burst forward from the shelf. Several volumes fell to the floor. He approached with caution. Was there some kind of creeper in the stacks, or maybe the orchard had a ghost? Either way, his stomach clenched in embarrassment. What if somebody overheard him talking to himself? Just as suddenly as the books had fallen, a face appeared in the space, a face Julian recognized right away. You! Julian and the face gasped in unison. Julian's jaw dropped. What were the chances? Romeo's face was framed by books, a deep red running up his cheeks. His wide eyes looked down, suddenly shy. Romeo, that's you, isn't it? Julian asked, taking a step closer. I am. Um, it's, uh, Romeo stuttered a reply. Julian smiled. He went to the edge of the small hole, Ro Romeo. Julian smiled. He went to the edge of the small hole Romeo had made between the books. I'm Julian, he offered. He put his hand on the edge of the opening, trying to lean in a little more. Julian Capulet. Romeo didn't meet Julian's eye. Instead, his gaze only got as far as Julian's fingertips. What needed yellow? Hmm? Julian glanced down to where Romeo was looking. Oh, that, he laughed. A splash of yellow was wrapped around the side of his pinky finger. I was just doing a little painting. Guess I didn't wash it all off. Romeo said something back, but Julian couldn't listen. He was too focused on Romeo's lips. He loved the way they looked when he spoke, moving back and forth like two dancers, coming together and apart again. They seemed warm and inviting, and they were getting closer. Julian leaned forward, close enough to feel Romeo's breath pushing up against his own, their faces hidden in the little cave made of books. It smelled like well-worn pages, old glue holding together spines of well-loved stories. There was just a touch of dust along the top of some of the larger novels. Julian took a deep breath. His fingertips gently reached out and touched Romeo's. Julian felt the same uncontrollable pull as the night before. Romeo whispered, a nervous tremor in his voice. Would you mind if I tested something? Julian nodded absentmindedly. Now that their lips were so close, he was unable to think of anything beyond the pounding of his heart as it filled up his head. Finally, Romeo leaned a centimeter closer, saying, I sort of haven't really, I haven't felt the way we felt when, I guess I just want to be sure. And then at last, they connected in a kiss, and there was no need for words anymore. A wave ran through Julian's body. All he wanted was more. Nothing else mattered, nothing but this. He reached to pull Romeo's face closer as their kiss became more passionate. They managed to knock over several more books in the process. Hey, you two! The shopkeeper's voice rang out, interrupting their moment. Not in the books, would ya? Julian's heart sank as Romeo pulled away and glanced towards the front of the store with a nervous look. Hey, is that you, Julian? Who you got in there? Gina's voice came over in a shout. Julian whirled around and saw Sammy approaching from the other side, looking curious and carrying an armful of books on DIY piercing and stick and pokes. Julian glanced back at Romeo, who was breathing heavily. Not in the mood for his friends probing questions and cutting remarks, Julian figured Romeo seemed just as anxious, maybe even more so. Without another thought, he ran to the end of the bookshelf. Grabbing Romeo's hand, he pulled him towards the door, heading out of the orchard and into the street. This has been Just Julian and Romeo for Real. They're both published with James Lormer LTD, and you can find them on the Lormer website or find them on Amazon Chapters or your local bookseller. You can get them in paperback and e-copy. Thanks for listening.